this square card is perfect for all occasions. For this square card, we will start with a piece of dark yellow cardstock measuring 8 inches by 4 inches. We will use our paper trimmer and scoring blade to score in half at 4 inches. As you can see, the scoring blade gives us a definite crease to make our fold along. Next we will use a piece of patterned paper and trim it to measure 3.5 inches by 3.5 inches. This patterned paper has a white core to it, which is essential for our next step. Now we will take our patterned paper and crumple it up into a tight ball. We want to have a lot of creases, so the tighter the ball the better. As you open it up, if you see there are places where you don't have folds, just fold it over and give it a little pinch. Using a sanding block, we're now going to take off the top layer of the yellow patterned paper. This is where you can see that we have the white core of the paper coming through as we sand our edges. Using a lighter colored tone of cardstock, we will measure and cut four and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. Putting our paper trimmer aside, it is now time to adhere our crumpled piece onto our cardstock. Because we've sanded this and crumpled it, it's a little bit more challenging to adhere. So we're going to use our glue stick for this. Apply lots of glue to all the edges and center. The more glue, the better in this case. Ensure that you get right up into the corners and all the edges. Flip over our crumpled piece and attach it to the center of the yellow cardstock. Firmly apply pressure to all sides. To smooth out our paper and ensure a firm attachment, run a brayer over the entire piece. Now we will tear all four of our edges. We want to leave a very thin border so that we ensure that it fits onto the face of our card. Tear towards you slowly so that you have a nice even tear. At the end, tear it completely off, turn your paper, and start again. Again, always tearing towards you. And there you go, all four edges evenly torn with a thin border. For this project we have chosen a gold fiber measuring 13 inches. You can use any fiber on your card. This one is called eyelash fiber and we're going to attach it with a glue dot in each corner. Take your paper and press it firmly onto the glue dot. Pull back and the dot will transfer onto your paper. Now we will take the end of our fiber and press it down into the glue dot. Wrap it to the front, bring it back up the back and again in the front with a crisscross. Then attach the end onto the glue dot pressing firmly. It is now time to attach it to the face of our card and we're going to use a glue stick for that purpose. We will want to use a lot of glue in all the edges and corners. Try and work around the fiber so that you have glue in all areas. Attach it onto the face of the card, center so that we have a thin border on all edges. Press firmly down and once in place we'll run a brayer over top of our piece. By using a brayer and applying firm pressure, we cause the glue to stick to as much of the surface area as possible. You'll notice that we've kept the inside of the card clean of any fibers. Using a piece of white vellum, we will trim it to 3 inches by 3 inches and tear off approximately a quarter of an inch on all four sides. Remember when tearing against the grain to go slow so that we have a nice straight line. 
When you tear with the grain, you can see how easily it will come off. Again, going against the grain, take your time. Now we will take our piece of vellum and run it through our paper crimper. Remember, the tighter the squeeze, the more elevated the ridges will be. This will give our vellum texture and dimension. Using a large daisy punch, we're going to punch out three daisies out of our yellow cardstock. Next, we will use a thumb punch to punch out three small daisies out of white cardstock. Now it's time to make our daisy accents. Layering the small daisy on top of the large yellow daisy, we're going to take an awl and push a hole through both daisies. Now we will take a gold brad and push it through from front to back. This becomes the center of our daisy and holds the two of them together. Flip it over and separate the prongs on the back. For a lifelike look, try bending some of your petals up. Once you've completed all three daisies, it's time to put some small pop dots on the back of each one. The pop dots will give it dimension as well as adhere each daisy to your vellum. Apply the daisies to the vellum in a triangle formation. We're going to attach our vellum to the face of the card with small glue dots. Apply the vellum onto the glue dot, press firmly and pull back so that the glue dot transfers to the back side of the vellum. We did it underneath each of the daisies so that we can hide the glue dot. Now we will attach it onto the card with the one corner slightly underneath the fibers and just press firmly over each of the daisy to ensure a strong hold. And there you have it, a card that's suitable for any occasion. <music>